Hey everyone, today we're going to be continuing on our topic on interviews and I actually thought I would do this video outside to get some fresh air and enjoy the breeze and the scenery. I have a lake behind me. Sometimes you can see ducks kind of floating by but it's a little bit windy and kind of cold so I'm going to head inside. See you in a minute. Okay, good. We're inside. Took my jacket off and sat down. I'm like, this is better. Um, I'll do outside one day when it's not so windy or not so cold and whatever. So, good. Now that we're inside and we're all comfortable, we will be talking about the interview process. So I talked about the pre-interview process in another video, but that was more generic for anybody doing a pre-interview. But this time I want to focus in and zone in on the business analyst pre-interview and some of the questions that you should be expecting and the kinds of answers that you should be giving. So um, obviously you'd have sent out your resume, you were screened, they called you. And then in the last video, I mentioned some of the things that you should and shouldn't do um, on that first call. So one of the things I said was just answer, you know, identify yourself. Hi, this is Carolise. You know, that way you avoid the whole scenario of who is this, can I speak with uh, Carolise, is this Carolise, blah, blah, blah. You identify yourself and that gets the ball rolling right off the bat. They don't have to figure out if you are the person that they should be talking to. And then I said to smile. Smile when you're talking on the phone. That will, they will hear the smile in your voice and they'll feel the pleasantness coming across the phone because you're smiling. So if you're grumpy, if you're sad, if you're having a bad day, forget about that for a minute and be happy, be pleasant. You just have to turn it on. So, sorry, in, just so that you can um, give a good impression on that first call. So, one of the questions that you're most likely gonna be asked is, why are you looking for a new job? So this can have different kinds of answers based on your situation, obviously. No, the first thing I would say is never speak badly about where you're coming from. Never, never, never say anything negative about your current employer, employees, coworkers, anything like that, right? You're always going to be positive. And not only that, but you're always going to be projecting onto the new job. So you're talking about the new job as much as you can and not necessarily trying to stick into the world of your current job or the job that you just left. So how do you answer this question of why you're looking for a new job when you have a current job? Well, you can say that my current job, I have limited opportunity to grow because I want to step into the business analyst field and my job doesn't currently have that opportunity there. They don't, ha they don't hire business analysts. So I really want to branch out into this field and I find like I have to look outside of my current job to make that transition. That's in the case where you, your, your, your current job is not as a business analyst, right? Or you could say, let's say you are a business analyst and you're trying to get into another business analyst job. Then you could say that right now my company, the kinds of projects that we're working on are more on maintenance mode. There are projects that have already been, all of the requirements have already been elicited and we're just maintaining these products. And so I want to be in a field where I can grow more in my business analysis skills. And so I want to work for a company where there are new projects and new challenges that I can take advantage of and I can help to build and grow and add value to that organization. Something like that. Now, if you are new to the field, you just graduated high school and you really don't even know anything about business analysis, you can say that you have studied business analysis in your in college and you've done lots of the principles and techniques. You're very versed in the principles and techniques of business analysis, but you really want to apply those to real world situations. And so you're looking for a job that will allow you to apply the things that you've learned and be able to grow and build with that company. Don't, don't use my exact words, please. I mean, I'm just giving you ballpark things that you could say. You have to tweak it and make it personalized to you, but generally these are the kinds of things you should be saying when they ask you why um, are you looking for a new job, okay? So those are situations that you have. Of course, if you've been laid off, that's probably the best 
situation to be in, in terms of having the need to look for a new job, you can say, well, my company has had a massive layoff and we have to find employment somewhere else. That's cotton dry and simple. Everybody understands that. If you were fired from your last job, you don't really want to disclose that. If you were fired, it's going to be very difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to come up with a reason why you're looking for a new job without saying I was fired from my old job. So you just have to focus on the new job. You have to speak about what you're looking for in the new job and say that this is the reason why you're looking for the job because you want to grow, you want to improve, you want to learn more, you want to add value to that organization and build yourself up as well as a professional. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to wing it. You're going to have to wing it. But that's just the kind of thing that you should be saying when they ask you, why are you looking for a new job? Now, the other question they'll ask you is, um, tell me about your current job. Now, this question is for them to understand if what you're doing right now aligns with what they want you to do in the new job. So they're looking for alignment. So if you already have a uh, access to the job description that would be great because you just look at the job description look at the bullet points and try to make whatever you say align <laughs> to what they're looking for so they're looking for this you say that you can do this and then you can show them clearly how they the two are comparable uh, if you don't have access to the job description that's fine you know your job you know what you've been doing you know what you work on so you just talk about that now if it's a business analyst job there's a couple of things that they're looking for they're looking for process improvement. How are you able to do process improvement? They're looking for UML diagrams. Can you, di can you map out a process, an as-is process, a to-be process? They're looking for being able to translate between what the business wants and how the developers are gonna build it. They're looking for elicitation techniques. How are you able to draw out requirements out of documents, out of people, out of processes to make sure you're, 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 you're able to pull out the real requirements, not just to come up with a solution that might not be solving the problem. So they're looking for those things. So if you can cover those things in your answer as to what you do in your current job, you're kind of giving them what they're looking for. Also presentation skills. They're looking for someone who can articulate themselves well, can present to different audiences, maybe clients, maybe C-level executives, maybe other team members. They're looking for your ability to do these things to see if you'd be a good fit as a business analyst. So whatever you say about your current job, make sure you try to touch on those points to give them what they're looking for. All right, another question they'll ask you is, what kinds of tools do you use? So if you're a business analyst, they're expecting you to be using certain tools that are common in the business analysis space. So you can just jump right out there and say some of the tools, which should include, um, Maybe Jira. Jira is one that people commonly use. Um, Visio for diagramming and drawing um, UML diagrams. Um, some people use Trello, um, Lucidchart for diagram. It's like an online Visio. Um, your regular PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. Um, so you can just pick up a number of tools, but we make sure you, understand, you can explain what you use them for, right? Another question they can ask you is about the methodologies. They may ask you about Agile. What is Agile? And you need to explain to them what Agile methodology is. I have a blog post on Agile. I also have a video on Agile that you can go watch if you want to be familiar with those terms. They'll ask you about waterfall as well. And they may ask you which one you prefer. Now, if they ask you if you prefer Agile or waterfall, it could be tricky because you don't know if their environment is waterfall or if their environment is agile. So you don't really want to box yourself in and say, I only like to do waterfall and then they're agile. Or you only want to do agile and then they're waterfall. You're like, oh my goodness, I just cost myself <laughs> moving on to the next step. So the best and safest thing to say is that you prefer both. You can say that you prefer both. You've worked in agile, you've worked in waterfall. And it really depends on the type of project and the industry that you're working on. Agile is best suited for industries that change very rapidly, that they have to adapt to the change, like technology, technology, um, media, things like that. But if you're into a more stable environment, then you might find waterfall works better for you. Like if you're into railways or railroad, transportation, manufacturing, things that don't really change that quickly, 
um, it might be a better fit for them to use waterfalls. So you can say that you're versing both. Now don't lie, if you've never worked in Agile, don't say you prefer both and you've never worked in Agile. You can say, I've worked in Waterfall, but I am aware of Agile, I've looked at Agile, I've studied Agile, but I've only had experience in Waterfall. And that might be fine, okay? So don't feel like you have to lie or over-exaggerate what you can do. Be very clear, be very honest, but always know what they're talking about. Don't say, what is Agile? Like, I've never heard of Agile. You know, that that's not good that's not a good sign that means that you don't even know what's going on in your industry so it's okay to say you don't know when you really don't know but try to know at least the basic things that's going on in your field that's a very that could be a very common question which one you prefer or if they don't ask you about your preference they'll ask you about each one of them individually to see if you know about it right so be be conscious of that and if you don't know go watch my videos about them and get up to speed okay all right another question they'll ask is how technical you are now as a business analyst you do not need to know coding you do not need to write code you don't need to be a programmer before you don't need to do you know any kind of technical stuff before but you need to understand them if you've done them before kudos to you great that way you can translate easily between the business and the programmers. But if you haven't, you at least need to understand what they go through so that you can write requirements or user stories that they can easily translate into code. All right, so when they ask you how technical you are, they're trying to assess how well you can translate between what the business wants and what the developers are going to be building. So you can say you're very technical. If you've ever coded, you can say I've, I've worked on certain languages and have built um, software and blah 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 if you have if you haven't you can say well I'm, I'm very technical because I understand a lot of how programming works I may not have written a program myself but I understand it um, I've worked with tech support I've worked closely with XYZ and that will kind of add credence to why you say you're technical. So basically you don't have to be a technical person but you have to be able to explain that you understand the technical challenges so that you can translate between business and technical people. They'll also ask you what kinds of documents you produce. Like what kinds of documents do you normally produce in your job or as a business analyst? And the answer to this is to show them that you understand the kinds of documents that you're going to have to present to them when you get that job. So one of the main documents would be like your business requirements document, which is going to be a list of all your requirements, or you can call it your functional design document, you can call it your SRS document. There are many names for these, but it's a document of all your requirements. If it's a waterfall environment, if not, you could say you're at youth stories and you have youth story maps out there. Um, your UML diagrams, your process flows, your um, use cases, things like that. So you want to have these documents ready to talk about and you understand what they are so that you can express them clearly to the person who's calling you about the job. Then another question that they'll ask, which is one that lots of people fumble, is how much do you expect to get paid? Now, as a business analyst, you kind of have your range. You know how much you should get paid. So give them your range. Don't fumble and, you know, try not to answer and skirt the question. Just tell them your range and caveat that by saying, also, you're willing to negotiate once you get to understand more about the job, the responsibilities, and the total compensation, which includes your vacation days, any bonus, any share of profit, uh, work from home opportunities and things like that. So you'd want to consider all of that before you actually tie yourself down to a figure. So for this initial conversation, you just give them a range and then let them know that you're willing to negotiate or be flexible on that as long as you understand the full breadth of the, 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 the job description as well as the total compensation. All right, so those are some of the questions that I think you should be um, prepared for if you're going to be doing a business analyst interview and these are the questions I think they'll ask you in the pre-screening I'll have another video where I talk about the actual interview and what you should be doing to prepare for that as well so thank you very much for watching and I hope you check out my other videos take care bye